City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. I'm going to be this one. It's a simplicity pattern, and I'm going to be making the longer version. It's basically a princess seamed coat with this really cool, come on, focus. It's with this really cool thing that's like a hood. But if you pull it down, it's like a cake. Right, so the you first know, like thing that. I'm going to do is get started putting together the actual coat front. And I need this little piece and cut in interfacing. So the interfacing I'm going to be using is Pelon Featherweight, which is kind of a medium weight in my opinion. It's fairly crisp. And the fabric I'm using is really, really dense, so I think that'll be fine. Now this piece is two inches wide, so what I'm gonna do is just cut the length and then use my rotary cutter and a two inch guide and just cut two strips that way instead of pinning this down and cutting along the edge. Okay, so over here at my ironing board, and what I have done is brought up a big plush towel from downstairs put that on my ironing board and I'm going to be using that whenever I am working with ironing my velveteen because that should help it so that it does not want to crush. So I'm going to first heat up my fabric here because it's a home deck. Sometimes home decks are a little odd with fusibles. A lot of times they have um, some kind of a stain resistant coating or something on them which makes them a little bit tough to get the fusible dots to really do their thing. So I am just going to carefully with a lot of steam. I'm not going to be pushing my iron back and forth just letting it set. Lift it up, steam it, let it set. Okay, I'm not really OCD about counting the number of seconds or anything like that or making sure I always use a press cloth because obviously I don't. But I find that it usually works out fine anyway. So if I go down all the way like that and you can see my iron marks, just, just press, press. Let's see what it looks like. Ah, uh, you can kind of see where my iron track is. What I'm going to do is get my little grooming brush. This is actually a lint remover brush that I keep handy because, you know, cat hair. But if I can just brush the nap after I touch it, I think I should be okay. And it's not bad. I'm just going to go ahead and flip it over one more time and then lightly iron the rest of it. Nice and even. And we're good. Okay. So that's why I'm being really particular about pens and things like that is because it seems like this is going to want to mark. I noticed that when I um, had the big bolt and some of the pieces were, it wasn't folded really nicely. It was a little bit wrinkled. And when I smoothed it out, I still saw wrinkles. So anyhow, we're just going to take it one step at a time. But this first time, first step is to fuse my two inch wide strip of interfacing on. That was the FedEx box. So we will have an impromptu Waywalk package opening here and see what we got. I had to get more filter mineral demineralization things to put in my iron. 
So I got a pack of that. Long invisible zippers because you know I need more long ones. And my miscellaneous pack. Okay, so this is the zipper that I got for this coat. It is the big plastic separating zipper. It's got a massive toggle on here. So that's kind of fun. I didn't know it was going to be that big. But this is the perfect time to see if it's going to be the right size. So will it fit? Yes, it will. I think that that's going to be really good. This, I ended up getting a 30 inch zipper. The pattern called for, I think 26. I couldn't find that. I could only find 24 or 30. So I decided to go with 30 and it looks like it will fit. So there you go. I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen a, a jacket zipper that big. So let me go ahead and fuse the other side on. And now I feel confident that we can move forward. Right, so with this done, the first thing I need to do is uh, run a row of stay stitching from the top point down this way, you know, working in this direction at a half inch seam allowance. And that'll give me like an eighth of an inch between that, that line and my final stitch line. But I'm gonna be doing all kinds of stretching around this neckline, so this is really important. And I am doing the stay stitch instead of stay tape just because um, I think that that would have fewer issues. Oh my gosh, look at this, look, look at that. All right, I just need to be careful with this. This could turn into a nightmare, but We'll just make it work. Good morning, welcome to the next day. And um, it's cold, it's rainy, but you know, we're gonna keep going. And yesterday I came to a point after I did the stay stitching where things just felt wrong. Couldn't put my finger on it, but I had that urge that I need to walk away from this because there's something that's not right and I can't, I don't know what it is. I still don't know what it is but I'm back and I'm gonna keep pushing ahead. Um, but one thing that I did notice is this, I think that this fabric, it's gonna throw little hissy fits no matter what I do. I think that it's gonna, every time the nap gets touched, it's gonna leave an impression. And that's just gonna be life. Because once the coat is done, if I put my purse over my shoulder, it's gonna leave a mark. If I lean against something, it's gonna leave a mark. And I am just gonna go with the flow right now saying, you know what? It's just, it's exercising its independence and creativity or something like that when it is getting um, a little bit mottled looking. Just because it's gonna be impossible to finish sewing this without leaving little tracks with the, um, feed dogs on my sewing machine or something like that. Now I do have a special presser foot that's supposed to be fabulous for velvets and velveteens and I'll show it to you. I was trying not to use it to see how it would work. And what I found is my regular presser foot did not leave a mark. It was the feed dogs underneath that left a little bit of a mark. So I don't think that the changing out the presser foot's going to do anything because it's the underneath part. So I think that as long as I'm sewing right sides together so the feed dogs are touching the wrong side of the fabric, everything's going to be beautiful. It's when I have to let them touch the right side that things might show. But honestly, I am, an, I'm not going to stress about it. I just can't. I think that um, we're just going to go with it. That, figure that that's the nature of it. It's expressing itself and we're just gonna move on. So, <coughs> excuse me. So with that, the next thing we're gonna do is put on the zipper on the uh, one side of it. It's like they only have you put one side of the zipper on, the other side goes on later. So we're gonna get started putting the first part of the zipper on. Okay, so I'm gonna be working with the right side of my front piece here and I have, remember these lines here that I drew on my lining? I have not put those on here yet. Um, I need to be able to see those on the right side of my fabric. So I need to draw a line two inches in, which is what this fold line 
come on, which is what this fold line here is, because that's the line I need for this zipper placement. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that in. So now I have this line here. So what the instructions say is to take your zipper and pull it apart, because we're only using half of it at a time, and I'm using the world's mightiest zipper here. Okay, so on the instructions they show you that you put the teeth of the zipper, the side that has the pull on it, okay, slider and tab facing down on the right side. And you're going to place the teeth of your zipper half an inch from the fold line. Alright, so here is my piece with the tab and I, they, they're going to want me to base this. I, of course, am going to use my um, water-soluble basting tape instead. So actually, they say to put it so the teeth are half an inch from this line. Um, just to make it when I need to put the tape on my zipper, but when I do it, I can line up my ruler so that the edge is half an inch, and then I can just place it like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and on the right side, the side with the tab on it, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a strip of my water-soluble basting tape all the way down. Okay, it has paper backing and everything, so I just keep putting it all the way down here. Okay, so I've got my tape on. Okay, I don't, I need to go ahead and pull the paper off of it now. And that's a lot easier if you get it started with a little stick pin because it's not very agreeable sometimes. All right, so I'm ready to stick my zipper with the basting tape on it onto my piece. And I'm gonna line up the half inch mark of my ruler with the line that I just drew. And that gives me the placement where I want my teeth to be. Now, <clears throat> It looks like on their diagram that they want the tape of the zipper to go all the way to the top of the fabric. And then if there's any gap, to leave it at the bottom. So that is what I'm going to do is start up here, place my zipper here with my tape all the way up to the top and just slowly press it down here. Now, once I have this, I can just move my ruler down and continue down the rest of the way. Right here. This is so much easier, in my opinion, than basting it by hand. I think that you get a much more accurate result. So, one of my favorite notions in the entire sewing room, you know, besides scissors or what, is this tape when you're doing scissors when you're doing zippers All right so now I need to stitch it on and being that it's a coat um, I'm not so worried that my everything is exact right next to the teeth I'm going to be stitching it there's a very very faint stitching line mark right here usually there's on a zipper there's like a single thread or something woven a little bit differently to give you a guide and on mine it's about an eighth of an inch from the teeth. So that is the line that I'm going to stitch down just using a regular zipper foot. Actually, I got over here and decided, no, I'm going to use my narrow foot. And the narrow foot is narrow. You know, it looks like this. Super duper handy. Love this foot for so many reasons. Okay. One of the, the reasons why I'm going to use this is because, unfortunately, I don't have an adjustable zipper foot. And I only have this one right now. I really need to invest in a different one, but it's going the wrong way. So if I, and I want to sew it from the top to the bottom, so I can't use this because it's too much of a gap here. But the narrow foot, you can, you can use it for both ways because it's going to naturally give you an, a, between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance if you line it up at the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead, get it started here, and just stitch down this very, very faint line all the way down from the top to the bottom.
I do need my stitches to go all the way to the bottom. So when I get a couple inches above here, I'm just going to leave my needle down, lift my presser foot, and try to carefully get this massive zipper above it. Oh my goodness, I may have to raise up something else here. Hang on. Big fat zipper. Hang on a second. Let me uh, just move it out a hair. Okay. Move it back in, replace her down here, and then I can go ahead and stitch the rest of the way down. Alrighty, so now the next step is actually to working on this side, I need to put in pocket. On the pocket, you cut two out of the lining, two out of the fashion fabric, okay? So the piece that you sew to this front one is the lining version. And I'm not marking the circles yet. I'll just keep this handy, but I need to match up this notch with a notch over here. Now on the, the piece, there are three notches. So pay attention to which one it is so you don't get your pocket matched up to the wrong one. So let me just go ahead and pull out my lining pocket, which has the print on the correct side for this. Okay. So this is the right side of my lining, putting it right sides together here. Make sure I am matching up the right notch and the right notch is the one that is between the two dots because these dots are for pocket placement. So there should be a notch right here and that is the notch that the notch on my pocket gets lined up to. So we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and um, clip this just on the edge in the seam allowance. I think this is just going to be my go-to method for this project. Okay, and we are going to be sewing this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. At this point, it doesn't say that we're only dealing with one side, but I'm going to assume we are. So I am going to go ahead and sew the pocket lining to the front piece of the left side of my garment too, so I can get this whole step done. I think it was just the zipper that we were only doing one side at a time. So once I stitched it with all the seam allowances pointing, you know, towards this way, folding the pocket over, I came back and I understitched, which means just to sew on top to hold it down flat right along that edge. And so now this is all nice and flat and I need to go ahead and sew the other side of the pocket, which is the pocket piece out of the fashion fabric onto my side front piece. So let me go get that. You may have noticed that I am not surging around any pieces and that is because the way that this is bonded, so if you can see bonded in the back, it's not gonna unravel. And because it's going to be inside of a lining that is interlined and completely encased, it's not going to show. If I was not lining this jacket and it was going to show, I might do something different with the um, edges, but I'm not, I'm not because it's not necessary. If this fabric was going, was unraveling, I would surge around it just for utilitarian reasons to keep it intact while I'm putting it together and while I'm wearing it. But I don't need to here. So um, this is my side front. And again, there's several notches along the side front. I wanna make sure I match up the one that is in between the two circles. All right, so I can see that there. This is my pocket, making sure I put the pocket down. I'm just going to kind of put it there and pull this out. That's the easiest for me. Now here's something else. You know, working with a fabric, it's kind of a trial and error sometimes. And at first I was thinking, well, I'm definitely going to need to use a walking foot for this because of the nap. But it's really odd because what I'm finding is the nap it's kind of holding itself together. When I put right sides together, it's kind of locking together so it doesn't want to come apart. It's more when I put like the other pocket, the one that did not have the nap, 
Um, that one actually was giving me more trouble than when I put two right sides together because it was a nappy piece against a smooth piece. But it, and, and every fabric is different, so you kind of have to figure it out as you go. But when I put two naps together, they're locking together. And so that's really nice. So I can just use a regular foot and not a walking foot on this. But, you know, figure it out on your own. So again, I'm going to sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, fold the pocket down, lightly press it, and understitch it along that edge. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so side front, front, I need to put these two together. So... At this point, I am just matching up notches down here and edges, making sure that the pockets are lined up fairly closely down here. Okay, up here at the top, this is where the princess seam area is, and they did not have us run a row of stay stitching or anything. And like I said, with the lining, with the lining, I felt like I needed to go ahead and clip it. Um, I'm going to see how this fabric works, if it will work into that curve nicely. Give me a few minutes to pin this together. So remember how I said it was harder to sew this one on because it was flat up against a nap? Well, look at what happened. I didn't even realize this. It's lower. It's about 3 eighths of an inch lower. But you know what? I don't care about that. It's going to be hidden. So I will just make an adjustment in the seam line when I'm sewing it around the edge, you know, do what I can to smooth it out. Because this is where a notch is, so I need to make sure that that notch stays where it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just pin this one here. So that is together. Now when I uh, took my edges and did my bending and see how they will fit, it's still, you know, at the stitching line. It matches up very well, but I still feel like it would be a lot easier to sew this if I had a little bit of a clip right there, you know, where it's really, really tough, just so it opens up. So while it's on my machine, working around, it'll lay flatter, okay? So I am just arbitrarily doing that at not very much. You saw that was probably between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch up there. I don't think I need to down below um, this part, but right up here, it just felt like it needed it. So I'm going to go ahead over to my sewing machine and sew it. Now, because I did not mark these circles ahead of time, and this is why, but I am going to be placing it kind of like halfway between where all this stuff is. Let me get a pen here. It looks like what they want you to do for the stitching is at the very top of the pocket, you know, once the stitching line has gotten to about 5 eighths of an inch past where both the pocket pieces are come and stitch all the way around and then come straight over, okay? This part here, this is that dot where it starts the stitching down. So I want to make sure that I've got all of this kind of placed. I do not like that, but you know what? We're going to deal with it right here. So I'm just going to clip. I can feel right here where I can make sure that both of my edges are the same. If I stick a pin through where this seam is here, the test is will it come out where the seam is on the other side? And it does. So I know that these two edges on the top and bottom are lined up. All right. Since this will not be seen, I'm going to use a couple pins in here just for right now. And pin this so I can make some changes. I'm really kind of bummed because this is a fairly small coat pocket to start with. And what I'm going to do is going to make it even smaller. But you know what? At this point, this is life. I'm hoping that the other side is a little bit better. But I am just going to trim them so they match up. So over here, I'm trimming it that way. And I am going to be putting a boatload of pins around this pocket so that when I sew it, if it wants to disobey, it's just going to pucker. Okay, so now coming down this side, I'm going to trim 
this part off. Again, none of this will be visible. I'll just have a slightly smaller pocket. But that's, you know, that's the worst of it. So again, I'm going to overpin this whole edge out here to keep it from misbehaving. Now with all of this pinned, I want the bottom of my stitching, see where this circle is? I'm going to bring that over here and put it about a quarter inch outside this side of that seam allowance and draw it down. That's where it's going to start there. And up here, I'm going to bring this dot over about a quarter inch this way and draw that line. So my stitching is going to go from up here, okay, at 5 eighths of an inch all the way down till I get to this point, okay? Then I'm going to just skip the pocket for a minute, bring it down here, start it up again, back stitch it at this point, and continue down at 5 eighths of an inch the rest of the way down. I'm going to add one more clip down here just to be safe. Then after I get this done, then I'm going to come back up here and at where this line stopped, come in this way. And they say to sew it at 3 8 of an inch, sew it at whatever you can, coming all the way around here. And at this point, just heading straight over to the stitching line that's going to be going right here. Okay, so it's coming down. Hang on a second. So then just to recap, it's going to be coming down here, stopping, starting here, down the rest of the way, then coming back up here at that stitch line and working around and coming this way to the stitch line. Okay, so this is what it looks like after I've sewn it. Here is my pocket hidden in there. As you can see, it'll fit my hand. Not a whole lot more, but it will fit my hand. So that's all good. I got around that princess seam with no puckers or anything. And what I did is I lightly pressed all of the seam allowance and the pocket and tried to lightly press up here. You know, because if I press really hard, even though I have that towel down, um, there's a chance that I could have a line here. You can always slip something in there, like pretend this is another paper or something that is not printed. You can put something between your seam allowances and your finished fabric when you press it, and that helps even more to ensure a line doesn't carry through, but I don't think that that's necessary for this one in particular, so I didn't do it, and it's fine. It didn't show through. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sew up the other side just like this. Okay, so here is my jacket front, and I just realized that they only want it pressed towards the center where the pocket is. So down below my pocket, I'm making a clip in the side front seam allowance. This one, the one without the interfacing. Making it near to the stitching line, and I will be pressing it open down here. Also above my pocket stitching. I will also be clipping fairly close to the seam line, probably ending about a sixteenth of an inch away. Clipping the back, which is the side, side front, and then pressing this open all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and do this pressing right now on both of my front pieces. Okay, so over here at my ironing board, I wanted to show you now Keep in mind, every fabric is different and they all respond differently. But when I go to press this open, I need to clip this. So um, it's not gonna lay flat without. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is my center front piece. I'm going to make a few clips um, down here, just so this side will press flat like that. Now this side over here, See how it looks all bunchy? I'm not a real fan of that. Hang on a second. Let me just lightly steam this to keep this one out of my way. So I am going to, where it looks like there's the most bulk, cut out some little triangles. Just, and I'm not getting too close to the edge, but I'm just going to cut them out so that there's a little bit of room for 
all of this extra fabric to come together without making all of those folds. So now I should be able to come back again lightly lightly pressing. I'm barely touching the fabric actually. I'm just kind of steaming and hovering and gliding. Push down with my hands to do the rest and now it's going to lay a lot flatter. So you know Every fabric is different. Some give more than others. Some absorb that extra fullness more than others. This one does not. This one does not. That shouldn't surprise me at this point, but that's what I had to do. I had to clip this and take chunks, notching chunks out of this side, uh, which is the uh, side part. And now it's going to lay nice and flat. The bottom part, of course, it's a flat seam. It presses beautifully, but I'm going to do this on both of my front pieces. Okay, so now on to the back pieces, which are very straightforward. It's just matching up this seam here. So make sure you have your notches clipped, but look at this. Just from a little bit of having a clip on, it is just marking itself like crazy. And I don't even know if I can get that out, but I am trying to be careful in only putting my clips inside of that seam allowance so that they won't show, but you know. She's a feisty one, she is. So I'm just going to go ahead and match up on both sides my notches all the way up. There is a princess seam here, but it is not as extreme as on the front. So I'm hoping that I can get away without notching this one. Let me go ahead and pin it and I will let you know. All right, so it's sewed together really well. But when I was pressing it, I did have to make clips in my center back piece just so it would lay flat, you know. But just pointing out where this seam comes together, everything comes to a point right here. So when you're sewing it, um, it's going to look like this. There's this, this side piece has this big point. That's the point where you start sewing. Just in case things got a little bit skewed and it's not matching up right, that's how it should look when you're all done. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this side together and press it open. Okay, so here is my back. Seams pressed open, just laying here. Look at that. Even just where it was folded just for a little bit, I have a mark. So you know what? We're just going to let her express herself and move on. It's time to sew up the side seams and the shoulder seams. So, you know, there's a notch to match down here, a notch up here, but it's basically just lining it up carefully. I'm going to clip it with wild abandon here and go ahead and sew these at 5 8 of an inch and then press these seam allowances open. So I just got all of this done and I realized I was supposed to stay stitch this before I sewed it on. So I'm going to sneak back over to my sewing machine and stay stitch the back of the neck here just the same as I did up here at a half inch uh, seam allowance. Do that and pop this on my dress form and get a look at it. Okay, so this is what we've got right now. I just have it folded at that fold line in the very front and pinned on here so that you can see in general what the layout's going to be. This is not attached right here, but beautiful color. I love this color. So that is not a problem. One thing I wanted you to see is if you look in the back here, well, it was doing a while ago. You see right here where it's kind of not laying right. Okay. It's um, a little out of sorts, a little bit just not right. What that is, is that on the inside, I need to make a clip right there just because all of the bulk is restraining it. So when I put it on my dress form, I take a peek. I trim this side so it looks fine, but I wanted to do this side so that you could see what I'm talking about. So like right here, I can see there's a point and right here there's a point. So if I take this pen out and open it up, let's see if I can get over here. My hand's roughly still in the same place. So I'm just going to make little clips in those two spots in the seam allowance so that it can flex a little bit more and pop it back up on here. Get my 
hand marks off. And now it's going to lay nice and flat. There's no pucker there. So if you ever are working on something, especially something that is uh, as rigid as a home deck fabric like this, and it doesn't look right, it looks misshapen, take your time and go in, maybe trim some bulk out of the seam allowance or clip some of the seam allowance. And a lot of times that fixes everything. So wanted to show you, I think it's going to be really nice. I need to go ahead and get started on the sleeves now. Okay, so I got my sleeve piece out here and I am just clipping these notches because I need to make sure that they are on right. And um, up here at the top where these two dots are, this fabric being what it is, I am actually just going to put a little clip on each side where those dots are. I did uh, clip notch it up here where the center one is so I know where that is but just doing this because I only need these on here for just a split second because I need to run over to my sewing machine and run two rows of gathering stitches see that uh, and run two rows of gathering stitches between these two pins I'm going to do one at a half inch one at about a quarter inch Okay, between those two on both of these. And uh, because we tried it out on the lining piece, I'm not actually running the gathering stitches at that one place where it wants you to gather it for the elbow yet. Okay, so I've got my gathering stitches here. And I want to show you that even though this is a very short distance, I used very, very, very strong threads in my bobbin. Mine are actually a form of fishing line, but just a super strong uh, thread in my bobbin because pulling on a home deck velveteen fabric could be problematic. I don't want anything to pop or break in there. So I just wanted to show you that. I've put my regular thread back into my bobbin now so that I can go on to the next step. And I'm gonna be forming this before I sew it in, but I need to do my side seam first. So hopefully, 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 I will be able to ease the um, extra area since, you know, we measured it before and it was only about half an inch between these two notches and down here, there's another notch. And this extra ease here in jackets and coats and some fitted blouses is just so that you can bend your elbow easier okay now at this point where it comes let me draw it here where there's an angle make sure that you follow that angle as I'm stitching it I'm just going to draw a line straight out here so I know not to miss that point but <clears throat> excuse me, in here where I'm going to be easing it. What I'm going to do so I have a guideline of where I am, I'm fold it in half like this. See if I can do this with this fabric. I'm folding it in half like this and that way I know if you can see that works in all the ease. Come on, focus for me. That's going to work in all that ease. So I'm just going to pin it here at the very middle A sec. Okay, but if while I'm sewing it, I sew it with the shorter side up and kind of roll it through my machine while it's curved, in addition to holding it taut on top, I think that it will eat, work in all that extra ease with no problem. So I'm going to go ahead, stitch, stitch this at 5 8 7 inch, you know, working that in um, on both of my sleeves. And then I'm going to press the seam allowances open. Just stick a seam roll in the middle of it and press these seam allowances open. Okay, so the instructions want me to put my sleeve onto my jacket before I do this part. But just to make sure that you know the actual finish length where it should be. I feel fairly confident just from trying this sleeve on and eyeballing where the shoulder placement is that this sleeve length that came with the jacket, which is an inch and a half, uh, hem here is going to work for me. So what they want you to do, let me grab a thimble here, is to turn the whole sleeve up that much, press it to make some kind of a little crease, 
and I'm going to leave it there while I stitch, but then to come back and hand baste this line so that, ouch, I just stabbed myself, so that we don't lose track of it. Um, so I'm just going to keep just large, large hand bastings all the way around here to mark that point. Well, I didn't like their way. Um, I am basting it, but I'm actually going to just draw a line based on where the sleeve cuff is so I have a line to follow. They want you to baste it so that when you're looking at the right side, you have a seam line to follow when you're sewing your lining to this part. So there is a point to it, I think. When we get to that part, we'll see what their, if their strategy plays out. So now I have a line and I'm just going to go ahead and follow that line that I drew with my basting thread all the way around. Okay, so with all my basting done, I am going to go ahead and shape my sleeve cap before I start working on placing it into my jacket. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn it right side out here and Keeping an eye on where my center mark is, I'm going to tug my two basting threads on this side just to get a little bit of ease worked in up to that point. And uh, then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Tug these two basting threads. And this is very, very thick to gather. So a good idea that I use the thick ones. Okay, so now that I have them tugged a little bit, I'm going to go over to my ironing board and work on shaping the sleeve cap. Okay, so if you haven't seen this before, it's basically a pressing mitt you can get for about five bucks on Waywalk and a couple bookends to hold it upright. Okay, so here it is, but that's the perfect size for a sleeve cap that I have found. And I just place my little cap over the top of it. And I'm going to steam this thing. Hang on, it looks like I need to pull this side's threads a little more. The whole point of this is to try to get the fabric used to its new shape before I get it into the uh, final resting place in its jacket. So I'm steaming it, pressing it with my hand, steaming it, pressing it with my hand. It's doing, the steam is, you know, shrinking some threads and stretching some threads, but in general, trying to mold it to the right shape up here. So that when I go to put it in to my jacket, it's already behaving the way it wants to, okay? So I might do a little bit more work on here, get the other sleeve shaped also. You see it's already wanting to hold that shape and then I can work on putting it into my jacket. Okay, so I'm gonna get started putting this in. We'll see how this goes. The first thing I need to do is make sure I'm putting the right sleeve on the right side. So if I lay my sleeve this way, the side that has one notch is the front. The side that has two notches is the back. Okay, so I want to lay my coat on top of it with the back on the right side, the front on this side, matching up my bottom seam like this. And again, I am just going to use my clips here. And then I need to match up that top Point where I made a little clip right here and match that up with my shoulder seam. And now open it up and we'll just see how it goes. I've got a notch to match up on each side a few inches from my underarm seam. If there's a little bit Come on. If there's a little bit of ease there, don't worry. It will smush into place. And you know what? Because it is what it is, I'm putting another clip there. Same thing over here. And pin it at those notches. And also where it looks like there might be a little extra, smush it into place. Smoosh. Okay. So now here I am, here I am. 
The point where my gathering stitches start is the dot that should match up with a dot on my uh, bodice, which I did not put on. But just eyeballing, it looks like it's going to line up perfectly without it. So I don't tell everyone, but I'm skipping that part from here because I can tell that it's just going to match up well. So I've got it all pinned together here. And what the instructions are saying is they want you to make sure that as you sew it, you ease everything in really well so that there are no puckers or anything up here. I think that's going to be kind of impossible with this fabric. This fabric is just so dense and so home deck-ish. I don't see it being able to merge together so there's no puckers. But here's my point on that. It's got this ginormous hood that's kind of like an elven kind of hood, you know? It's like Lord of the Rings come back in a coat. And the odds are I'm not going to be keeping it up over my head like that. It Realistically, I'm going to be wearing it like this most of the time. And look, that covers up the tops of the sleeve head. So even if there are uh, a couple little puckers at the top of the sleeve, who's going to know? Nobody's going to know. It's like that meme. Nobody's going to know unless I put the hood on. And at that point, the hood is going to be such a dramatic focal point, they're not going to be looking over here. So I'm not going to stress about it. So usually when I am putting on a sleeve in a coat tailored jacket, something like that. I put it on by hand back stitching it. So I still need to think about that if I'm going to or not. Um, because of how finicky this fabric is, I think that I will, at least for the first round, they want you to do two rounds of stitching. I think that if I put it on by hand, I will be able to guide the fabric much easier than if I'm on my machine, just, you know, by, by the nature of what this stuff is. So let me go ahead, get some green thread and a needle, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so the first thing I need is to make it accurate, I need a stitching line to follow. So I have just a piece of measuring tape, because general measuring tapes are 5 8 7 inch wide, and I'm just putting it at the edge so I can mark a little stitching line for me to follow. Okay, I can continue that the rest of the way around. Get myself a uh, nice thread, you know, tug on it a little bit, make sure it's not gonna snap really easily. Grab a thimble here and start stitching. And I'm gonna start over here, um, by one of these notches, go towards the bottom and then back up around the top, okay? All right, it took me a second to get myself situated here. I'm gonna go down till my needle just barely passes through the bottom, come back up. So many clips, I know my thread's gonna constantly get tangled, but that's okay. And then I'm back stitching, so I'm gonna back up almost to the previous stitch, again, go down to my needle, just barely comes through, and come back up, and so on, and so forth. Getting through the seam allowances is the thickest part here for me. Get that moved over. But by doing it nice and slow, I can take a clip off at a time, be feeling the back to make sure that the back is um, not wrinkled, you know, not stretched out, whatever, and just work my way through. Once I get all the way around and I have a back stitched seam line at 5 8 7 inch all the way around, um, at that point I can go ahead and pop this down onto my machine and run extra seam lines just inside of that all the way around one or two times just for extra reinforcement. All right, so I want to show you what it looks like just back stitched. And here's the thing on regular weight fabric, um, I can make my back stitches a lot tighter and very secure. 
This fabric is so thick. I wasn't able to make them as tight as I normally would like to when I'm just using them as is to set in a sleeve. But it is enough and at 5 eighths of an inch there they will stay in there but I'm going to go over it with a row of straight stitching and then come in with a second row. This is the other sleeve and I have already gone back and stitched a row of stitching over where I did my, my back stitching at that 5 eighths and then about an eighth of an inch in I ran a second row of stitches. So that, let me turn this to the right side here. Um, by doing it that way, I have a lot more control over working where all the fullness is going to go up here. So I will be, you know, and I told you from the beginning, there would probably be a little bit of, it's not really a pucker, it's not really a gather, but it's extra fullness under there. I don't, I'm not worried about that. I think that's going to be fine. Besides, it's in the back where you usually need a little more room back, back there, you know, shoulder blade-ishness. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did here over on the other side. The only thing is once I get them both done, I'm going to come back in here in between these two bottom notches. I'm going to come back in here and trim it fairly closely to that second row of stitching. So thick, so thick right there. Like this, just to make it more comfortable for while I'm wearing it. Okay, so here she is. And I just have it folded again at that front fold line. So this is about how it's gonna lay. And I was able to try it on. I think it's gonna fit really well. But I wanted to show you how the sleeves are. As you can see, it's a little bit of fullness here, but it's not really ruffled. I have not pressed around the sleeves yet. Um, maybe later. Right now, I just wanted to get it up on here and see how it's gonna look. I need to make sure that my seam allowances are being pressed towards the sleeve. And that's gonna help it have a nicer roll. Uh, a lot of times when I'm making a coat or jacket, I spend a whole lot of time putting in um, sleeve cap things. Uh, you know me, I'm the queen of shoulder pads and stuff. This did not call for it. I am not putting it in there, especially because that cape treatment's gonna cover it. So I think it's gonna be just fine, but I just wanted to show it to you. And so I have moved my coat part over onto my second dress form, and it's time to get started working on the lining. Now this is where I'm going off script from the instructions, because the instructions want you to make the lining the same way you make the coat, and then insert it, okay? So you saw we made the lining, I need to make an adjustment here because the piece that I cut out for my mock-up um, is the one for the outer garment. The lining here is supposed to end here. I can trim that off very easily. Um, but I am going to be switching gears, taking my notes from my Bishop sewing method because she has a very good step-by-step -step of putting in... Um, interlining into the lining of a coat. And so if you want to know where I'm getting all this information, that's where it is. So I'm going to go ahead, take this off of here, go ahead, put it back down onto my table. First thing I'm going to do is unpick these shoulder seams because I need to be able to butterfly this thing out and lay it flat on my table. All right, so I have got my shoulder seams opened up again, and this is a front piece of my interlining that I made and this was cut to the right size for the lining. So if I put this on here, I can see that my lining piece is supposed to end at this mark here. It's easier to see maybe on this side. At this first line here that is the center front. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead with my scissors. I already have this line marked and just trim off that front part of both of the fronts all the way down this line and then this will be ready to use as lining. All right, I was going to try to do this without having to take these seams apart, but I would be skipping some steps and just kind of 
making some stuff work and I think I'm gonna do it the correct way <laughs> since I'm on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these seams out also of all of these panels. So next time you see, I will have a lining piece that corresponds with each interlining piece. Hello and welcome to the next day. So today I'm really gonna focus on getting this underlining lining layer done and installed into the jacket, maybe even finish it, who knows. Um, I actually did a lot of work last night. I carried all my stuff downstairs, popped on an Agatha Christie movie and just watched stuff and was able to sit on the sofa and just trim and work. And so what I have done off camera, obviously, is I have all of my lining pieces separated, okay? Told you I was gonna do that. And then I took my quilted layers that earlier I put together. And what I did is sew them to my lining layer and I just chose which side I wanted up against it and I chose that I wanted the red side up against my lining so that the uh, flannel side is exposed, okay? So what I did is I sewed them together with like a stay stitch, come on focus, like with a stay stitch at about a half inch seam allowance. You know, sometimes it's a little more or less because things weren't lined up exactly where the two edges met, but it's close, about a one inch seam allowance for stay stitching the whole thing, okay? And then I came back and trimmed off to the best of my ability all of the seam allowance. So if you can see, the stitching is right there, okay? Let's see if I can find a spot, look there, you can see the stitching there a little bit better. Hopefully, there's the stitching, and I tried to trim off all of the seam allowance so that basically the stay stitching is just barely holding that quilted layer on all the way around, okay? I have not dealt with the bottom yet, and um, because there's several different ways that a hem could work, and I'm still kind of working that out in my mind, but um, one thing I need to mention though is when I was doing this, I noticed that the piece for the very center front uh, lining is shorter than the center front piece for the outer garment. So if you plan on doing this, just be aware that, yeah, I made it the length of the outer garment when I was doing my mock-up, but I probably am gonna be shortening it at some point. Now, this coat has a uh, one and a half inch hem on the pattern. That's what it was designed for. So last night on one of the pieces, and I think I'm gonna do this for all the other ones, except that center front, I'm still working on that one, is I actually, you can probably see it better here, drew a line at one and a half inches and then I decided, no, that's no good. So I did it at two inches, all right? Because I don't want to fold my quilted layer, that'll add a lot of bulk. But if I have a hem at an inch and a half, see if you can see it, if I have an in, a hem at an inch and a half and my quilted layer starts at two inches, I'm thinking I might be okay. I'm not sure how that's going to work with the um, extra ease that sometimes you have in a fold so that you can put things on easier. So. Working on that, but I just wanted to show you where I am right now. So all of my pieces for my bodice are sewed together like this right now. Now for the sleeves, remember, I'm not doing a quilted layer. I underlined them. I underlined the lining. Could it be that my flannel is technically an interlining? I don't think so because it comes all the way to the edge, okay? So I underlined my lining with flannel and that's all I'm doing because I didn't want that stiffness. So that's where I am right now. The next step of this process is actually to sew all of these pieces together, these bodice pieces, so that I have a complete garment. So I'm gonna do that first without putting the sleeves on. So it's kind of like a vest type of a situation and uh, get started there, okay? All right, so I just made the decision to go ahead 
and um, get all of my bottom edges cut like this where I have a two inch space between the bottom edge of the lining and the bottom edge of my interlining. So I ran over to my sewing machine, stitched them all, even the very front one, I did it the same amount. Now, the front piece, um, this is my front. Hang on, let me move these out of the way. So this is what I'm gonna do first, is trim my lining so that it is the same length as my interlining piece, because that's the length that the lining is supposed to be, okay? And then I have a few threads here that I need to, to clip off. So now I have this piece opened up, up to this point, okay? So the way that I did this last night, the way I'm gonna do it right now is actually look at it on this side and I can just peel back my fabric layer, get it out of the way, and then I can come back and get my scissors fairly close to that stitching line and, and not have to worry about cutting the actual lining fabric, okay? And then I can just set this piece aside, it is done. So the very center front pieces, there's only gonna be a one inch gap below the interlining. Everything else, all the other pieces, there's going to be a two inch gap below it. So that's how I'm doing. Let me go ahead and finish cutting these. All right, so now that I have all of my bottoms trimmed up, I am just going to start assembling my lining, which is I'm gonna be uh, sewing together my center back to my side back pieces, just like I did in the regular fabric, in the green. Um, but here is the main difference here. The, just lining this up, the edge of this was supposed to be at about a half inch seam allowance, okay? I'm gonna try to sew this at a one inch, I mean at a five eighths inch standard seam allowance, which means that I should be sewing just the very edge of the lining pieces in that seam, okay? If I miss one or the other, you know, I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm trying to get as close to this lining as possible. Just to hold it on, to hold it in place, but not to have a lot of bulk once it's opened. So um, that's my plan, that's my plan. So I have my center back here. I'm just pinning a side back to it. Again, just like I did with the princess seams on the green, matching up those two notches, doing my best to ease things. It's not as critical that there are no puckers or anything in that princess seam curve, especially on the front with this, because it might be a little difficult to shape the uh, inner lining piece because this is a lining it's not going to be 100 percent visible so i'm not going to stress about that too much but i am going to do my best go ahead and sew my center back and side backs together my center fronts and side fronts together and then put those together down the side seams and the shoulder seams all right so this is my back piece i have you know the sides sewed onto my center back and I wanted to show you, I am pressing these seams open, but not really hard. And that's because this is a polyester, fiber fill, loft batting kind of stuff in here, okay? If you really press that, it will compress and fuse together and become like a really stiff interfacing, have zero insulation value or, you know, whatever. No, no air is gonna be in there to insulate and it's just not going to work out right. So the way that I am ironing my pieces is, um, I've got a ham here just because for the curvy parts that seems to work out better. I am opening it up with my fingers and I have, you know, about an eighth of an inch or so of the batting part in here. So I'm just doing the best I can, I'm not going to get fanatical about it. Hold my iron just slightly above it and steam it up. Okay, and then press it down with my hand. It actually 
actually feels nice and warm and damp and cozy. So that feels nice. And then that's going to hold that seam allowance open enough that it'll lay flat for me. But since I'm not pressing it with my iron, it's not going to melt all of my batting. So let me go ahead, finish pressing my front together. And then I'm going to sew up the side seams uh, between the fronts and the backs and also the shoulder seam and press those seams open. Okay, so this is what my inner lining piece looks like now. It is not going to overlap like the other one because remember we cut it from a narrower piece so like the other one has a big overlap. This does not so it's actually fitting correctly. Just wanted to show you what it's looking like and now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the sleeves so I could sew the sleeves onto this piece. Bucolic 